the Super CD ROM ROM. Yes, that's how you say it. I've had this one a while. It suffered from scratchy audio issues. We're gonna do a full recap and see if we can't get this working like new. Flip you over, big girl. Let's see that backside. You're gonna need a security Torx bit set to get this open. Get a little peeksy inside. Oh yeah. Watch this ribbon cable. It's just held in with these two plastic prongs. Oh, just look at her. You will have shields top and bottom. You have to take the bottom one off just to access the top one. I find that saturating that braid in no clean flux helps to wick that solder away. It really helps if you use an object to push on those prongs while you're heating it up once you get all the solder off and to just keep jiggling it and then moving it around that way it doesn't re-solidify. Release your death grip, damn it. Now this thing's finally free. It's some work just to get them shields off. Here I'm marking the ribbon cable and the connector. That way I make sure it gets on correctly. I decided to go ahead and remove this so it wasn't flopping all around breaking. All right, with that out of the way, I decided to start unplugging this optical drive assembly. Here you'll need to remove these two fasteners. You just push in that center pin with something hard. I ended up using my fingernail. Once it's pushed in from the bottom, you can remove them from the top side pretty easy. They just pop right out. Then I'm removing the connectors using a pick tool. And the whole optical drive assembly can pop off. And it's, it's pretty crazy how beefy this thing is. I bet you could stand up on it like heavy grade stamp steel. Remove that little protector. Here's your sister board. Got a lot of capacitors crammed up in there. And now you can see all these points on the back to desolder to get that secondary smaller shield off. Here you can see it just fell right off once all the solder was removed from those pads. There's a close up of the board. There's a large mix of surface mount style and through hole electrolytic capacitors. Not fun. I just went ahead and snipped all the capacitors off, even the through hole ones. You can see I had quite a bit of leakage and corrosion, and this was a pain in the ass to clean up later. But even with the surface mount capacitors, I used the snip technique coming parallel from the legs. You give it one snip to snip through that first leg, and then you come through and clip the whole can off. From there, you can pry the bottom of the can away and you'll be left with those two little mushroom tops. Remove those and then you'll be able to pry that little insulator away. Make sure you print out your cat map. I don't know what you would do without this on this job because you got a ton of through hole style capacitors and surface mount. Here's that super capacitor. I'm going to go ahead and remove it. The legs on it were too thick, so I ended up having to trim it down flush. That way, when I come in with my desoldering gun, it can uh, flow that solder joint and I'll be able to suck it away.
Here I'm just going ahead and moving the rest of those through hole capacitors from the bottom. And I'm left with quite a bit of corrosion on the board and a lot of spots. This system had a lot of leakage, had a lot of leaking capacitors. Got to go back and scrub them down with a fiberglass pen. You got to get all that corrosion off or you can't get that solder to flow to even remove it. Um, I used 91% isopropyl alcohol. And even after scrubbing this multiple times, I came back and had to give the whole board a wash and hot water and detergent and a scrub with a toothbrush. Here it is right after the alcohol bath and scrub. Then I took it to the sink, used some uh, diluted Dawn dish soap and some warm water, gave it a good scrub down. Most of that corrosion came off. Here you can see that that was that section that was really bad. It finally came clean once I hit it up with some water and some Dawn dish soap and gave it a good scrubbing. Um, I rinsed it with distilled water, but this fiberglass pen definitely helps too to break away that corrosion. So here's the technique I'm using to put these through hole style capacitors onto these surface mount pads. I'm just bending the legs at a 90 degree angle, snipping them, you know, I'm just eyeballing it, seeing what size the pads are, how much I need to cut off of those legs. Go ahead and pre tin your pads. Just holding it on there and pressing that leg into the puddle of molten solder. Getting the other side. You gotta check this area over and over because it's it's a high tolerance area. You got a shit ton of capacitors you're gonna cram in there. And if you have them sticking down like that and then you have more coming up from the bottom, there's just not going to be room. You're going to have interference. So you got to be creative and bend your legs like this to get them to lay down sideways. I do all of them coming up the middle like that, laying down in a sideways fashion. Here we are pre tending the pads, getting ready to drop these sideways laying capacitors in place. Once I get that front leg on, I'm just pushing that back leg into the solder as I'm wetting it. Here's a look at how they're all gonna lay on that board. There's a lot of custom fitting involved. Just take your time bending these legs up. You just gotta take your time and Form everyone to fit those pads. Give yourself enough of a gap in between the legs so you don't have any shorts. Just get them to lay down good. Here I got those four in the middle all laid down nice and flat. Uh, these top two, you can see I had to lay them down in separate directions. It's all about clearance for that little sister board here I'm just bending all the legs for the surface mount conversion to the through hole style capacitors there's gray spots on your cap map that tells you it's a high tolerance area so uh, those are the ones you want to lay down and just take your time double check for clearance Now I'm going to go back and put all my through hole style capacitors in. We got all the surface mounted ones converted to uh, the through hole style. We got them laying where they need to be. And we're just going back and putting all the through hole style capacitors in their, in their vias. 
Make sure you check polarity, double check the values of the capacitance and the polarity, double, triple, quadruple check. Here we're test fitting that board again. I, I had to test fit this several times. You had to be creative with the way you laid them down. The tight fit. Now we're gonna put that super capacitor replacement in. Now we got all the through hole style capacitors in. We can go and solder them in. Come back, snip the leads off, the legs off and then give it a scrub down one last cleanup with some alcohol. Now we can go ahead and reinsert that ribbon cable. All right, once we got that ribbon cable soldered back in, we can go ahead and put our shields back on and get them soldered back on. You would probably want to test the system at this point, but uh, I had enough faith in my work I was OCD and quadruple checked everything. We're installing that board for the last time. Look at that tight fit in there. And we're gonna push those center pins out and disassemble this optical drive assembly. I'm using super lube synthetic grease to lube up these gears, the guides, and uh, get that optical drive functioning nice and sweet again. I went ahead and cleaned the lens while I was at it. Here we got everything back in and it's just the reverse of disassembly. Screwing everything back down. You gotta screw it to do it. Anyway, we got this fat little girl back together again. Comes the moment of truth. Oh yeah, I call this one a success. Audio, video's good, no issues. Button works, the door opens and closes. Um, off camera, I clean that button. The, the plastic on these gets dry and porous and brittle. And I just use that super lube synthetic grease and put a very light film on it and it, it functions like butter now. You just gotta recondition that plastic. Clean the button housing out, all the little latch mechanisms, the hinge, I lubed it up, and it's all working smooth again. So that's going to wrap this one up. Don't forget to like and subscribe.